Okay, so I know I have a certain marathon I need to start, but it's going to take a while to get started, so I ask for your patience. <laughs> you already know what I'm about to say. I need one more holdover. But come on, cut me some slack. I'm reviewing a ton of shows. But anyway, this video was thought of while I was watching Inside Out for the Pixar video, and I noticed the use of cameras in the scenes revolving Riley. I was also watching it with my mom and sister, and they were just looking at me weird when I pointed it out. This is stuff I do instead of getting a girlfriend, pointing out cool things in animated films. <sighs> I'm going to be a virgin forever. But anyway, I brought up Inside Out because it made me think of older animated films that properly use cinematography because it blows my mind how 2D and 3D animated films find a way to use these camera shots, like close-up, extreme long shots, over-the-shoulder, low angles, you get what I'm saying. Now, the end of Evangelion actually has some amazing cinematography, but in order for me to talk about that, I need to rewatch it and... That movie messed me up, bro. But we still have other films to talk about. I wrote a list that, in my opinion, have some of the best cinematography. Now keep in mind, I'll give my opinion on the films, but these are not reviews, so I'm not going fully in depth. So let's start with hand-drawn films. Hey, you already know, I cannot do a video on cinematography without mentioning... Watch or whom do we aspire to reflect our own people's death? Or whose entertainment shall we sing or agony? I'm not sure if you guys know this. I don't think I mentioned it, but uh, yeah, The Prince of Egypt was one of my favorite movies of all time. Beautiful story, beautiful animation, and amazing acting. I touched on it in my video, which if you want to hear me go fully in depth, hopefully you can get past my old mic. You know what, I should use that mic for the rest of the video. So this film has... <laughs> yeah, nah. But yeah, this film has some amazing shots in it. I've already mentioned the amazing extreme long shots in this film, and to this day, I still think they look amazing. But I want to talk about the smarter uses of cinematography in this film. The scene where Moses tries to work things out with Ramesses is one that gets me the most. But I love because when we cut to Ramesses getting angry and attempt to commit another genocide, the amount of low angle shots in this scene makes the scene what it is. Even the smaller scenes where Moses kills a man and he runs away, it's perfect. Hey, so you still haven't watched this movie? You know what? I'm on my way. But yeah, you see what I'm trying to say. And you can see how the rest of this video is gonna be. Go watch the Prince of Egypt. I'm not gonna lie, I had a hard time finding films in the Renaissance era I could talk about because they all have something special in them. But today I'll cover The Lion King because I'm basic. Now I may have joked about it in the Prince of Egypt video, but don't worry, I still love The Lion King. I don't think it's overrated, but it's not my favorite Disney film. That goes the dinosaur. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, y'all. I think you guys should know by now that I love extreme long shots. They make any scene perfect, especially when you have Hans Zimmer composing the film. This film has some of my favorite shots in animation history. Like the opening of the film looks absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure other people feel the same way, which is why I low-key really don't like the remake because it just lacks on what the original had. Married! God, one day you will be married! To each other! Ew. Will you shut up? You shut up, man. It's a comedy. So yeah, I tried to single it down to one Renaissance film, but I have to talk about this other one. The Hunchback of Notre Dame has amazing cinematography. The film itself is also a treat, even though the jokes don't really fit this type of movie. The film was nominated for a Razzie, how? But anyway, The Hunchback of Notre Dame has some of the most impressive shots I've seen in any Disney hand-drawn film. I even go a step further and say it's the prettiest hand-drawn Disney film. Like the musical number out there, sung by Quasimodo, has to be one of the most gorgeous scenes in this film. I think the lack of bird's eye view for this movie was such a huge missed opportunity. Like come on, could you imagine how good this movie would have been? And this is not a flaw, it doesn't ruin my experience. It's all worth it to see Quasimodo on the top of the church screaming sanctuary. Just a beautiful shot. Okay, I, I can't help myself. Let let's talk about two more Renaissance films. Mulan and Beauty and the Beast. Now I don't care what you say, I love Mulan. The song Reflection? Like come on y'all, y'all know that song slaps. But that's not the point. Mulan has perfect cinematography. More specifically, in the scene where Mulan cuts her hair to take her father's place in war. The one close-up shot that still gets me is the part where Mulan is about to cut her hair and you see the reflection on her sword. Just a perfect close-up shot. And now Beauty and the Beast. I need to get off the Renaissance era or we'll be here forever. Beauty and the Beast, I was surprised with the amount of good looking shots in this film. The standouts were the Be Our Guest musical number, and any scene where anybody's in the woods it was just perfect. And that's the films that are hand drawn that I feel have some of the best cinematography. I know there's definitely a lot more to talk about, like I heard Spirit of the Way was amazing. But guys, I'm watching Disney Channel shows and Cuba shows, coming some slack dog, I'm doing the best I can. Before we go to CG, we gotta talk about my favorite type of animation, and that's stop motion animation. They may not make a lot at the box office, but oh my god, they are some of the best things you'll ever see. 
The first film is one of my favorite films of all time. This movie lost to Zootopia at the Oscars. That, that honestly makes me heated. But yeah, Scooby and the Two Strings. The number of close-ups and the stream long shots and bird's eye shots, this film kills it. I was blown away seeing this movie for the first time. It still blows my mind to this day. If you haven't seen this movie, you're missing out, dog. You know what? Let's stay on the topic of Laika. We, of course, have to talk about Coraline. Coraline and Kubo. Kubo. I, I said it wrong twice. Coraline and Kubo are on the same level to me. Coraline slaps. What makes this film stand out is the fact that this film has creepier moments using stuff like the worm's eye view when Coraline's other mom is turning into a spider. It makes you feel just as tense as Coraline and shorter scenes involving Dutch angle shots. Our next film is something I find insanely underrated, Paranorman. It's a crazy good film, I love this movie. There's a lot of high angles and worm's eye shots in the final act, and it's as good as you think. Time to go back to Disney. Tim Burton came back to make one of the most underrated Disney films, Frankenweenie. Its style lies on a more old school horror film, and it's so unique. It's like the art style of The Corpse Bride for 80 minutes. Tim Burton definitely has a unique style to wherever he touches. Most of the time it hits, other times it's... Ew. But Frankenweenie definitely touches on old school film shots. And for as simple as that sounds, it really looks good. Speaking of The Corpse Bride, this has to be one of the most gorgeous looking Tim Burton films. Go ahead, bring up The Nightmare Before Christmas and watch how fast I block you. But this film has a lot of clever usage of camera angles. Low angles, Dutch angles, and the scene where Victor runs into Emily in the forest speaks for herself. It's that good. And that's all the stop motion animation films. Remember, I have too many things on my plate, so I didn't watch everything. Like the Wes Anderson films, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and Niles of Dogs. I've seen only one of those films, and I didn't even finish it. But I love stop motion animation, and it will continue to grow with time. And it shows a lot of love to film. Definitely check out those underrated classics. Um, funny line, intermission. Okay, so it's time we head into CG films. I feel like it's easier for most CG films to pull off certain camera angles, and the select few films I have are absolutely amazing. Time to get started with... I can't even make a video like this without mentioning Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I never actually gave my thoughts on the film on the video before. So, what do I think about Into the Spider-Verse? This film is definitely smart with the way it uses the cinematography. I've said that word so many times, oh my gosh. But Spider-Verse is crazy good when it comes to the amount of camera angles. When Uncle Aaron dies, there's the over-the-shoulder shot. Not to mention, this scene is crazy emotional, and the leaf of face is just amazing. I think what really gets me is that this movie feels so real with some of the shots it has. This film was just beautifully made. Spider-Verse in itself was just a love letter to moviegoers. Now, what do I think about Spider-Verse? Now first I was going to mention Toy Story 4 in this video, but because of plans, I'll hold on for now. Keep in mind I said plans because I have a problem with confirming stuff that will never come out. But anyway, let's get on to Tangled. Don't worry, this will be quick. I love Tangled to pieces, but the only scene I'm talking about is of course the lantern scene, where Eugene, who names a child Eugene? I'm going to name my son that. Hey y'all, look at the, <laughs> hey, look at Eugene Smith. <laughs> where Eugene and Rapunzel realize they have a thing for each other. And yeah, this scene is just beautiful. I love how the background is just blurred a bit, so we can focus on the main two characters. The lighting is perfect and the song is just catchy. It's just a great scene. You know what? Let's get the Disney stuff out of the way. I never said this in a video before, but my favorite CG Disney film is Moana. Hands down. No competition. This movie's visuals are some of the best I've seen in any Disney film. I just love this film to pieces. But the one shot that still blows my mind till this day is where Moana is about to put the heart of Tafiti back and the water separates. And j just look at it. This shot looks so good. Do you not see this? It's amazing. But in all seriousness, yeah, this scene is perfect. Watch Moana, bro. Okay, so back to DreamWorks. I know I've been going over more well-known companies instead of the lesser-known companies, but remember, too much stuff on my plate, I'm already late on a whole bunch of other projects, and me doing this holdover isn't really making anything better. But How to Train Your Dragon, DreamWorks' most popular film franchise and their highest rated film franchise. Although I kind of like the sequel more, I gotta say the first film in itself was an experience. Talk about a film that shows up 
No, shut up. Talk about a film that finds creative ways to show off some of its amazing shots. Like seriously, this movie is 10 years old and it has some scenes that blow my mind. But yeah, this film really shines when Toothless and Hiccup hit the skies. And we get some amazing music to boot. To continue this DreamWorks appreciation post, I have to talk about Kung Fu Panda 2, literally one of my favorite sequels ever. You can never convince me that the final battle is not good. This whole movie is just beautiful to look at. The scene where Poe learns inner peace is just a great message for the movie. It's just so good, like... It Oops, hold on, okay, I'm sorry. I can't go into full detail because I plan on making a video on all three films, so I have to keep this one short. Hal Zilmer kills it once again, just had to make that clear. And that's all the CGI films I could talk about there. It wasn't much because the amount of stuff I put in this video are things that deserve their own videos, so I apologize for that. But CG is great because since these characters are three dimensional, animators could make it work, and I'm happy it looks so good. Okay, so before we close this video off, I want to cover one more thing, and that's animated shorts. They have clever shots in there as well, so I feel like we should sell them for love too. This short was released in 2018, and it almost got a tear out of me. Weekends is a short film going over divorce. I was showing this short in school. I was in an animation class, and we watched all the 2019 nominated animated shorts. That was such a mouthful. And this is one of them. And man, this short looks gorgeous. What I really love about it is that there's no words in this and it leaves it up to the audience to put the pieces together. This short didn't win the Oscar, but man, it really should have. Now let's talk about the short that's most likely going to win an Oscar next year, Us Again. It's fun and sweet at the same time. And come on, you got a black queen. Of course I'm going to point that out. Just like that one show my friends and co-workers keep asking me to review even though I said I was going to review it. But Us Again was a great time. Next is Lava and Piper. Two of the most realistic shorts I've ever seen. If it wasn't for the talking volcanoes and the bird, I would have thought it was real. If it sounds like I'm rushing through my script, I probably am. I love the shot of the clouds going over the volcano, and Piper, I mean, every shot in this is just perfect, so no need to point out everything. Have you ever heard of Bird Karma? This short is so funny and it has a great message about greed. And it gets pretty dark near the end, but it doesn't stop me from having a good time. Last but not least, we have Blue Umbrella, which might be my favorite short, like, ever. The behind the scenes are just crazy, seeing the crew use cameras to make the short feel more real. This is actually how I found out about cameras in animated films. They can really bring a scene to life, and this short doesn't disappoint. And that's it. I know me talking about shorts was short, but there wasn't many I wanted in this video. So I keep some things out due to, ugh, you should already know by now. Now you may be wondering, Timothy Smith from the YouTube channel Timothy Reviews Revival, what has the best cinematography ever? And that's quite simple actually, it's Little Baby Blum. Now, hear me out. This John is a cinematic masterpiece. What's that video say? An underrated masterpiece. Dog, do you not see what's going on here? This is better than the Prince of Egypt. You gotta be out of your mind. <laughs> I'm dragging out this video like crazy. <laughs> dragging these nuts like <laughs> It's funny how I've been a huge fan of cinema since I was four. Watching movies has always encouraged me to do more. I have too much passion for film to do nothing. Which is why I never ended Timothy Reviews. I like film way too much to stop doing this channel. And doing this video really helped me appreciate all the time and effort put into animated media. You guys should do the same. Stop complaining about art styles, especially if you can't draw like me. To wrap this up, I just gave you a few movies to watch on your downtime. Hopefully me talking about this didn't bore you too much. And when you guys rewatch these films, hopefully you have a new appreciation for cinematography. <laughs> Alright, so after this video, we'll be back to a regularly scheduled program. I know I made some other person mad with my opinion, but hopefully, this video's fire. I'm finna have y'all PCs like this. But yeah, we can finally get started on this dizzy thing marathon crap. Hey Tim, but uh, what about Kubo? That'll be on a later day. Wait, who are you? <laughs>